gentlemen, the following contest is a Where's this going? I think it's about to be a highlight reel. Match. Introducing oh, first. There it is. And we have it officially started here. Yeah, this referee won't put up. Oh, man, by the hair. Oh, this is not good at all. The pendulum. In matches like this, guys, you learn very quickly which superstars have what it takes to truly get extreme. Regarding Corey's point about superstars having what it takes to get extreme, I would argue that every superstar in the locker room possesses a mean streak. Yeah, but not all mean streaks are created equal, Michael. But I'd say there's only a select few who can turn their mean streaks all the way up to the most extreme level. Back now inside the ring. If you're in a one-on-one -on -one match with Charlotte Flair, what kind of strategy do you employ to score a win against the Queen? You know, Charlotte doesn't really have backup like Rick did with the Four Horsemen. In fact, Charlotte's made enemies out of most of her allies. Charlotte's allies. The four horsewomen may look imposing, but Rick didn't anger Arn and Tully to the extent her NXT group have fought. Yeah, if you can find an alliance to stand in your corner, there's a chance Charlotte might not have any friends in the back to neutralize him. When the WWE Mixed Match Challenge was announced, SmackDown's first team was Charlotte Flair and Bobby Roode. I couldn't have picked a more glorious pairing myself. That Charlotte and Bobby Roode pairing was a slam dunk for SmackDown Live general manager Daniel Bryan. They're both decorated champions, and they both know how to rock a robe. And while I'm usually not a fan of Daniel Bryan's decision-making, he really stacked the deck for SmackDown Live when he put the queen and the glorious one together. He gets it with a reversal. Lita's starting to look a little uneasy. I'd say he's starting to feel the pressure a bit. The amount of punishment he's absorbed in this match is absolutely insane. A lesser man would have given up and walked away by now. Oh my God! The great thing about our fans is they have the right to cheer a group for whoever they want, but the amount of hatred I've heard directed at Lita can be downright vulgar. Lita has been in volatile situations where the crowd has resorted to calling her despicable names. The usually focused Lita becomes unhit. Look out, Charlotte is measuring. He is a one-man gang in there. But is it enough to end it? Charlotte is in. Can he finish the job? 
Isn't showing much life here, guys. You two bringing up what fans have called Lita only reminds me of how Lita doesn't care what some idiots in the crowd have to say about her. I don't think she deserves that sort of treatment either, Corey, but I have Lita staying on the attack. Now he's got to capitalize. Charlotte's just getting overwhelmed. That's not something you see often for the Queen. He's fighting from underneath. Of course, Extreme Rules matches have resulted in some gruesome moments over the years, and perhaps none was more gruesome than in 2012 when Brock Lesnar busted John Cena open following a vicious attack. He's fighting from underneath. And he's heading back in. Lita thinking it's time to go for the win. Solo is in trouble. Two, three. There's the pin. It's over. It's all over. Here is your winner, Lita. It wasn't pretty, but a win's a win. That's a big win right there. Anytime you can pin another WWE competitor's shoulders to the mat for the three count, you should be proud. And it's matches like this one that make SmackDown such a success. Thank you so much for joining us.